Good morning. Flash loop cloud there. Woo. Murder! Murder! Mm. I really hope my copy of Clayton's book comes today. Just feel like it won't, though. You know, I sit by the front door, you know, until the last possible time before I have to leave to come and do the show. Just staring at the letterbox. Nothing yet. Nothing. Now I know how all those renegade hardware artists that never got paid felt. <laughs> Lobsters. I think maybe when I do my critical essay of uh, Clayton's book, I'll, uh, I'll dictate it sort of sat slightly sideways to the camera like this. I'll get a beret. And uh, maybe I'd be smoking like a Galois or something. Perhaps uh, a cravat would be nice. Uh, um, uh, in the chapter where he refers to the signing of Messiah, you can see the clear postmodern undertones of the power struggle between both artist and record label. Mm, clearly, clearly owing, a, you know... Clear reference to the struggles of the Soviet Union in the you know the late twentieth century. <laughs> Clayton obviously giving a nod to Foucault. Clearly a nod to you know the postmodern philosophers of the late twentieth century. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited though. I'm hyped for it. I've not had good reports, but uh, I'm still keen. I don't want to spoil it with the PDF. I know I've, I've been sent it by multiple people, but uh, I really want to wait for the real thing. I fucking paid money for it.
That's too late again by digital. Ooh, on the mental state release. Function. Ooh, we. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday. It's the 19th of February. February. Supposed to be digging up the internet today. Supposed to be getting down there, getting at the coal face. The, the, battling the internet monsters that live underground. That you have, you have to bargain with them, basically. They're like trolls. They're like, not internet trolls. Now, don't confuse them with actual internet trolls. But they are trolls that control the internet. You got to bargain with them. You got to reason with them. You got to pay them cash. Uh, you got you have to pay them in horse beans, basically. They want like you have to pay them in horse beans and exposures. And what I mean by exposures is nudes. And you have to basically just get a sort of you know I mean it might be a three to two ratio nudes to horse beans. And if you can pay them enough, they'll let you dig up the road basically where they live, and they will allow you to run new internet cables down there and uh, then that's about it really that's sort of um you know as far as sort of on the spot coming up with stupid stories for the beginning of the show goes that's as far as i've got with that one ladies and gentlemen welcome coffee and memes steady job and a couple extra lobsters that's all i want if you're getting on you're pushing 30 slug you know it's time to think about getting some ambition oh I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The C, the O, the F, the F, the E, the E, the M, the E, the M, the E, the S, the C, the O, the F, the F, the E, the E, the O. Lobsters, lobsters, lobsters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. The Super Sharp Snips remix of the theme tune there. Thanks to Mr. Merck for um, posting the zip folder with all those uh, the, the, the alphabet, the Super Sharp Shooter, the alphabet. He posted it in the Discord. It's there for anyone that wants to uh, have a crack at it themselves. Uh, I will make that remix pack of the intro so people can do their own versions because I think that'd be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I can play them. You know, we can we can vote a winner and then we can all go around to the winner's house and toss them off, you know, in a big long line, uh, whether they want it or not. I think that would be a lovely lobster meet-up. And I think, I think for the first one, I think that's a perfect that's a perfect opportunity. Right, look, while we go in the news, a uh, man who believed he was kidnapped as a baby finds out he was given to the wrong parents. <laughs> this is exactly what we didn't want to happen. A uh, man throws napkin away and police use it to link him to a 1993 murder. Careless. Carely, careless schoolboy error by man. One in ten Brits has pretended to be vegan. <laughs> um, Danny Dyer says ISIS bride should uh, be allowed to return to the UK. Well, I hope that uh, Danny Dyer is not, not because of this issue in particular, but I hope that Danny Dyer is never actually given any sort of legal power in this country. As much as I love him, and as much as I enjoy his work as various East End uh, hard men in the movie films, and also for his hilarious tweets... Maybe, have they brought him on? Like, okay, so this was on, let's just go straight into this. Uh, they brought him on, he's on Good Morning Britain, yeah, with um, Maidley, Richard Maidley, and um, Judy Finnegan. Don't know why they, uh, I know they're married, I don't know why they've not chosen to go with the same surname. That's, I don't know, perhaps it's feminism, I don't know. Have they got him on as a sort of expert witness because of his 9-11 tweet? Uh, which was, was it 10, 10 years after 9-11 or something where he tweeted, can't believe it's been 10 years since them slags blew up the Twin Towers. <laughs> Fucking d- blows your nut, doesn't it? Or something to that effect. Look, I think it's probably worth worth finding, isn't it? Uh, Danny Dyer, 9-11, yep, there it is, 9-11 Twitter. Oh, lovely. Um, yep, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not obviously not laughing at 9-11. I'm laughing at Danny Dyer's tweet. Can't believe it's been nearly 11 years since them slags smashed into the Twin Towers. It still freaks my nut out to this day. He's <laughs> like, it up his mind. That was oh, on the 11th anniversary of 
It still freaks. I wonder if it still freaks. I mean, we're now obviously eight years on. Well, seven and a half years on from that tweet. And I wonder if it still freaks his nut out. I'd, maybe we should tweet him, find out. Uh, maybe I'll do that on my own time. I, look, I don't know. Um, where are we, though? Danny Dyer, come on, look. There he is. Look at his little face. Look at his, have a little pipe at his boat. He's a good boy, isn't he? He's a nice lad. He's a good, uh, good cockney boy. Born lovey-dovey to the sound of bow bells. Okay, come on. Danny Dyer has spoken about what he thinks should happen with Isis Bride, uh, Shamima uh, Bergam, after he was asked on Good Morning Britain for his opinion on the matter. Uh, yeah, I think I think most stuff like this should be run past Danny Dyer before we make any sort of legal decisions. <laughs> like it's just some sort, of, some sort of arbiter of international law. Like just stick him in the Hague, have him d- d- try people for war crimes. Listen, you've been an absolute muggy little sigh. You've beheaded people. You've burnt. You've burnt geezers in cages. You're an absolute slag. I'm not. Uh, we will not stand for it. Twenty-five to life. To sh- send him down. Uh, the 41-year-old EastEnders actor uh, surprised viewers when he admitted that he thought uh, Bergham, now 19, should be allowed to return to the UK after she fled Syria four years ago when she was ra- uh, fled to Syria four years ago when she was radicalised. Well, you know, mate, we've, we've all made mistakes, haven't we? You know, he's fucking gone, gone out. He told the missus that you'd be owned by 10 and you'd only have two pints. Next thing you know, you've had 10, you join the ISIS. It can happen. You know, I fucking, you know, I don't, don't, don't mug her off too much, yeah? She's just a, she's just a bird, isn't she? You can't, you know, you, pff, fucking birds don't know their own mind, do they? Come on, you can't blame a bird. Fucking, they're nice, aren't they? Soft, long hair, you know, shrill voices. You know, birds and that. Fucking, they're all right, aren't they? Fucking give her the benefit of the doubt. No, she don't mean it. We'll make mistakes. Kidding that, won't she? Yeah. Lobsters. I think that's what he said. Find out, though. Uh, when he started speaking about the issue, he asked... How was it she got it into her head, <laughs> into her nut, that going to Syria at 15 years of age is the answer when she lives in this country? What's that all about? Uh, <laughs> who's there to guide her? You know, talk to her. <laughs> Why is she so lost within her soul that she thinks that that's the answer? Go to Syria. I don't know whether or not Danny Dyer is capable. Bless him. You know, bless him. And I'm, look, I'm not trying to claim some sort of intellectual superiority over Danny Dyer. But I don't know whether or not Danny Dyer is equipped with the mental capacity to understand uh, the potential, I don't know, brain cha- brain changing possibilities of uh, radical extremist religious ideologies. I just I don't know whether or not he's. Uh, nah, but it's, but it's mental, isn't it? Why you got? Nah, it does me nothing. Nah, don't do it, mate. Just fucking have a cup of tea or something, mate. Just go to that go to the fucking boozer or something. Fucking kids are mad. Let's fucking go to Syria and join the ISIS. Fucking got to be dad doing nothing. Oh, where would I? But you can't even get a phone signal out there. <laughs> uh, good morning, Britain host Richard Madeley, 60. Oh, it's not Judy. It's um right. What's happened there? I hope, I hope there's not trouble in paradise. Um. Uh, good morning, Britain host Richard Madeley, 62. Then blame the internet for the radicalisation. Uh, well, I should just get rid of the internet then. I think that solves that one, doesn't it? Uh, she wouldn't have gone if it wasn't for the internet. No, the internet's just the conduit. That's the uh, that's the game changer in our society. No. What are you going to blame books if someone if they if, like before the internet when someone was could potentially be radicalised by a book? Were you blaming books? Oh well, now we've got books, haven't we? You know, and you can write anything in books. You know, well, we should maybe well, take it back a little bit further. Why, like, just the written word? Well, since the written word, you know, since la- the invention of language, people have been able to radicalise each other, haven't they? Maybe we should just stop talking. Hey, maybe we- that's a good idea, isn't it? If we banned talking everywhere at all times, punishable by death, then no one would be able to radicalise each other. That's not a bad idea, Richard Madeley. That's not a bad idea. Uh, and a baffled Danny hit back telling him, We've all got the internet, Rich. <laughs> Are you thinking of going to Syria? I mean, seriously. Danny died, the voice of reason. <laughs> oh, God. What's going on here? This is like, they wheeled him out a little while ago to, about Brexit. And he's like, That's slag. 
David Cameron. He's sitting there with his trotters up, isn't he? Fat, you prick. <laughs> and like, Corbs is on the other side. Just doesn't know what to do. Uh, Danny Dyer, Danny Dyer, the voice of reason on Good Morning Britain. He then added, radicalisation, radicalised don't actually jumping on a plane at 15 going to Syria. I don't understand what's going on there. <laughs> now she wants to come back. Yeah, of course you don't understand what's going on there, Danny Dyer. Bless you. Go and do another football factory. When he was asked whether he believed she should come back, uh, Danny said, yes, I do. I feel she needs a chance. You know, we need to go, uh, maybe, uh, maybe to explain what was going on in that. Maybe we can understand a bit more how they got to her. And I actually thought it was the right move. Danny Dyer, voice of reason, still a young girl. Uh, who was she looking? At? Who was looking after her? Maybe we can learn from it. I don't know. All right, look, he's obviously self-aware that he hasn't got all the answers, but he's he's a reasonable voice on the topic. Get him on a podcast with Rogan. Get him on there with Sam Harris. Uh, get him on. Give him, give him a show on LBC. That's all. I'll give him a show on Threshold, no problem. I ain't got that much of a budget, but I don't know. We'll throw a few more shekels into the Patreon pot, see if we can get Danny Dyer to have his own show where he just... Yeah, maybe he could do the sort of sat sort of slightly sideways to the camera, smoke the tab. What would I do about ISIS? Bunch of slags. Uh, nutters, ain't they? Got to, got to get rid of them, ain't ya? Got to... Uh, Nah, nah, slags, ain't they? Can't, can't, can't be having it. Nah, idiots, aren't they? Dickheads. Nah, not into it. Nah, I don't, I don't get it, mate. Why, why, why you got to do stuff like that? What's it like? Mental. That's fucking mental. Nah, I ain't about it. Nah, get rid of them. I say, just get clear them out. Clear them out. Find them, yeah. Clear them out. Just not into it, slags. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. It's just, it's just an endless source of fucking mirth. Uh, yeah, oh, please never change, Danny Dyer. <laughs> just, uh, God bless him. He's, um, oh, I should try and find that. Uh, Danny Dyer, uh, I'll find it for tomorrow's show. Danny Dyer being interviewed by, it's like the Porn Awards or Pornhub Awards, and he's being interviewed by Pornhub talking about wanking. <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking love wanking. <laughs> of course I do. I'm talking about what sort of porn he likes. It's the most debased thing you've ever heard. It's absolute internet gold. I love it. I love him. I'm in love with him. I fancy him. I want to marry him. If he ever decides to go... Uh, <laughs> that's another interview. I can't remember. He's been interviewed by a uh, glamour model. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> she's sort of like, she's like, oh, you ever had sex with a guy? And he's like, you yeah, tried it once. I fucking hated it. <laughs> he tried it. Give him credit. Credit where credit's due. He had a crack. Not into it. Nah, 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 nah. I hated it. All right, look. God, enough of Danny Dyer. Uh, Hall of Mirrors uh, by Quartz. It's on Metalheads. Nice bit of gear, all things considered. Severance is a great film. He's good in that. Thank you. 
haven't watched EastEnders in a little while. I know he's in it. Is uh, is he good in it? Bad in it? What's going on? Frogs on Acid album. What are people saying? Dilly, what are you on about? Frogs on Acid album. Danny Dyer's Britain's Hardest Men is, uh, just sounds like a porn series. <laughs> that, that I would watch. I'll be dead keen on that. boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Hall of Mirrors by Quartz on Metalheads. Very nice. Jesus, yeah, you could do lines of Danny Dyer's face, couldn't you? Uh, I mean, for those just listening on the podcast, I've got a frame, a, a, a lovely framed uh, print of Danny Dyer as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Uh, he died for all your fucking muggy sins. And uh, yeah, he guess, guess he could do lines off his boat. It's possible, isn't it? It's possible. Right, what else we got? Uh, do, do, do people are compl- uh, no probably give that one a mess. Uh, let's just take let's take this napkin. Let's just just have a have a, have a part of this fucking fucking napkin in it, mate. Um, man throws napkin away and police use it to link him to a 1993 murder. Uh, uh, maybe it's a 1993 murder of a certificate. I don't know. Uh, come on. A man has been charged with a murder which was committed 26 years ago after police took DNA from a napkin he had used to wipe his face while eating a hot dog. Going to reports, officers arrested Jeremy Westrom last week after a genealogy firm analysed the sample and linked the businessman to the stabbing of 35-year-old Janine um, Anne Jeannie Childs back in 93. Why? The 52-year-old from uh, Asante, Minnesota has reportedly denied all charges and has been released on a $1 million bail. Child's body was found in a neighbor, uh, found by a neighbour who had noticed water coming from her apartment. When police arrived at the scene, Child's... Uh, oh, he looks a bit murdery. I don't know if that's... Uh, if that's sort of... If there's any sort of legal weight behind looking a bit murdery. It's like looking a bit pedo -y. It's not... It's, I don't know. It's the sniff test, they call it. Um, Child's body was found, yep, uh, when police arrived at the scene, Child's, who had previously worked as a sex worker, was lying on the floor and had suffered numerous stab wounds. Officers took DNA samples from a bed comforter, a towel in the bathroom, and a washcloth from her toilet seat. Uh, toilet set. Yeah. Uh, cold case investigators from uh, Minneapolis Police Department and the FBI began to review the case back in 2015, working alongside the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension Forensic Laboratory. Three years later, they then consulted the FBI experts and a private DNA company, which revealed two possible suspects. According to the Minneapolis State Tribune, one of them was Westrom, who lived close by at the time of the murder and in 2016 had been charged with soliciting a teenager for sex. No, no, no. 
Last month, police followed him to a hockey match, uh, where after watching him wipe his mouth and throw his napkin in the bin, they rifled through its contents until they found his tissue. The father of three was then arrested at his office last Monday. Uh, are they allowed to do uh, I guess if they've got, you know, uh, probable cause, would that be it? I don't know. Uh, just to... Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't, I, as as you might be able to imagine, I don't know, I don't know the finer points of US uh, law. Just, just don't know it. Minneapolis a police chief, uh, Madeira, Arredondo, Ar- Ar- said, How are <laughs> Our efforts to increase public safety and ensure justice has no timeline. This case is an excellent example of great collaboration between law enforcement partners and that now, we. Uh, Jill Sanborn, special agent in charge of the Minneapolis division of the FBI, added, We all hope Jeannie's family can finally find peace as a result of this tenacious effort by officers and agents. Uh, The case underscores law enforcement's ability to use every tool at its disposal to correct the case. If necessary, we will draft in the UK's Danny Dyer and have him work his way systematically through every possible slag in the country until they find... The right slag who done the murder. The BCA, Forensic Science Service, is committed to helping investigators understand the facts of an incident. We are continually working with our partners to bring answers to victims of crime, no matter when the crime happened. So basically, lads and lasses who listen to the show, if you're going to do a murder, yeah, you're going to do a murder, you can't leave DNA on anything ever for the rest of your life. Okay, so easiest thing, yeah, easiest, don't do a murder, okay? That he, oh, oh, enough a pain in the ass. yeah, having done a murder, yeah, because you've got to clear it up or you've got to get, get away, yeah, they're going to be looking for you, yeah, and if they find you, and they'll probably, they will, probably, because they've got all, oh, all sorts of slaggy detection fucking things, haven't they? Got all, oh, all this DNA and that, oh, you were here then, you were, oh, I don't fucking know, I don't know where I was last week, mate. He'll get you. Oh, pain in the You've got to go, uh, got to go to the clink, ain't you? Oh, for ages, years and that. Oh, pain in the ass. Got stuff to do, mate, ain't you? I've got places to be. Oh, you fucking knocked up in a slammer. Ah, smuggy. It's mugs game, mate. Don't do murders, yeah? That is more just public information from Coffee and Memes. Don't do murders, okay? I think... I think that's something we can all get behind, you know. Even though in 2019, a time of some of the most polarised political opinions and just general polarisation amongst the full spectrum of opinion, I think something we can all get behind is don't do murders. It's mugs game, isn't it? It's a muggy thing to do. Don't do it. Okay, good. Right. Well, as we go, one in ten Brits has pretended to be vegan. Study finds. Uh, now, this is a study where I probably fall on, that confirms my bias. So, I, no matter how spurious the data collection, no matter how, like, what, tiny sample size or really rudimentary the study procedures are, I am 100%, have 100% faith in its, in its outcome. Now, it's an interesting one, though. One in 10 Brits has pretended to be vegan. Okay, so that's out of the entire British population. But how many out of 10 vegans have pretended to be vegan? Because it could be a lot higher. You know, you would think. I mean, I can't do the math on that in my head. Snips, any idea of the maths in that? Oh, so it's about 7 out of 10 vegans are just pretending. Wow. Damn. That's amazing. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's ponder, ponder further. We might like to think of ourselves as honest people, but we all lie. Speak for yourself, Jake Massey. Uh, of the lad bible uh, that's the truth don't believe me go read one of your old cvs then we'll talk <laughs> <laughs> he ain't talking not one more word to you until you've gone and consulted one of your own curriculum vitae's and then you're like no I, no i'm sorry jake massey i did get double c in science actually i did i've never told a lie it's probably more than you've got. What, oh, well, let's have a look at Jake Massey's credentials down in the bottom. Uh, Jake Massey is a journalist at the Lad Bible. He graduated from Newcastle University. Uh, doesn't say what in before going to live in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, so he fled, 
Uh, he fled the country after leaving Newcastle University to live in Australia and New Zealand for a few years. Very wishy-washy, this. Uh, where he wrote a travel blog. Okay, he went on the run, didn't he? Jake Massey, with your 173 Twitter followers. Uh, he has previously written for the Eastern Daily Press, Giggle Beats, Calm, and Front Magazine. Uh, he enjoys playing football, listening to music, and writing about himself in the third person. Oh, Massey. I don't know. Maybe well, let's have a look at, uh, at Massey's um, Twitter. Let's see who he follows. Oh, Massey. Oh, he, look, he follows Atletico Mints as well and Reeves and Mortimer. I think we could get on. I think me and Massey, we could be friends. I think uh, I think I could probably bond with anyone that enjoys the Atletico Mints podcast. Uh, take back most of the trash I've talked on you. Most of it. Not all of it. I don't know. Take back everything. Uh, look, here he is. He's on a uh, some sort of uh, statue of some sort of beast. Uh, he follows Ramsey, uh, Greggs, um, uh, Charlie Sheen, uh, Ellie Pringle, uh, the BBC News, the press office, Chris Morris bits. Uh, I think me and Massey get on. You know, he follows Dominic Smithers. Obviously, he's probably contractually obliged to uh, uh, likes Fat Freddy's drop a little bit. A little bit sort of 2004, but, you know, I'll, I'll leave him to it. That's fine. Uh, he's obviously a Manchester Manchester football fan following both uh, the city life of Manchester and Manchester United women. Um, perhaps, I don't know if he's a confirmed male feminist. I, 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 I just don't know. Anyway, look, back to the story about these vegans. Come on. Wasting your valuable time. This is our time together, and uh, I, I really want to make the best use of it. Um, but while pretending to be hardworking, organised or good at listening uh, may seem like logical things to do, pretending to be vegan may not. Yet a study recently found that one in ten Brits has pretended to be vegan at some point. Okay, so is this going to lead to the study? Um, no, it's just literally the UK. That's just pointing to the UK news. Okay. Uh, so... Why might someone pretend not to consume animal products? Well, for the same reason, someone might pretend to go to the gym, enjoy musicals, or speak Italian to impress a potential love interest. Oh, Jake Massey, have you unco- uncovered a devilish plot by people to try and impress members of the opposite sex? I fear you might have done. The study conducted by Money Saving Heroes found that a quarter of Brits had lied about being vegetarian, while only a third of the veggie and vegan liars said they would ever even consider the dietary switch. Uh, truly, they are wolves in sheep's clothing, or, or, wolves, or wolves in a plant-derived textile clothing. Great banter. Uh, the results were collated after quizzing 2,409 Brits over the age of 18, with 32% uh, of the veggie and vegan fakers citing that they needed to impress a honey or a hunk. <laughs> Uh, as their reason for doing so. Uh, the second most popular reason was to stand out, with 22% of the fibbers clearly thinking that pretending to not eat meat is a better way to get yourself noticed than, say, wearing those trainers that flash every time you take a step. The third reason was to gain social media popularity. 19% of the fakers have boasted of the virtues of not eating meat on Facebook and Instagram while tucking into a parking bucket, uh, as if we need uh, telling that. Uh, the wheel seems on the side. Uh, any, any more actual... Um... Uh, however, George Charles, a spokesman for Money Saving Heroes, refuted the last reason. Oh, no, what was this? Sorry. Uh, and of those 42%... Uh, look, I've jumped ahead, on I? Look, come on, let's... Uh, sorry, I should, I'm doing Jake Massey a terrible disservice here. Let me read the rest of his thing. Of these people, 42% said they would be likely to use the ruse again, while 66% said they wouldn't actually consider going veggie or vegan. 27% said they liked meat too much, 24% said it seemed too hard, and 19% said that it was too seemed too expensive. However, um, uh, George Charles, a spokesman for Money Saving Heroes, refuted the last reason and condemned the phony veggies and vegans. He said, the amount of vegetarians and vegans in this country is expanding year on year, and it shows no sign of slowing down. It has gotten to the point now where people are willing to lie about uh, whether their diet, lie about whether their diet, just to impress others, which is honestly quite a shock. If you want to be a vegan or vegetarian, you should commit to it and not live a lie, especially as many have made this change for good reason, like animal welfare. 
It's also important to note that being vegetarian or vegan does not necessarily mean it'll be more expensive to eat. There are definitely cheap options out there for non-meat eaters. Uh, though if you do manage to lie your way into a vegan meal or two on Tinder, it will obviously be more expensive than the usual Rustler's burger for one. Oh, Jake Massey. Oh. I'm afraid he's still quite down, quite far down the list of my favourite lad Bibles. Uh, lad Biblers, topped off, of course, by the ever, ever fragrant Dominic Smithers. Uh, right, what else we got? Um, we have that. No, no. No, no, uh, no, 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 uh, yes. This is uh, Criminal by MD. It's on program. Played it the other week. That's repeating now. Got a picture of Joe Waits here prepping for the Brexit apocalypse. Uh, there he is. Uh, he's uh, got himself a uh, human skull there on a stick. Uh, he's probably eating it, I presume. <laughs> it's, it's got a Tory, Tory skull there that he's eating. He's eating the flesh off the face, eating the cheeks first. It's burnt him, burnt his face first, and just feasted on the delicious uh, Tory cheeks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't been caught yet. <laughs>
This is Criminal by MD. It's on the program. It's very nice, it's very nice. Just a little reminder, you can get these shows as a podcast. Just go to your podcast app of choice and search for Coffee and Memes. You can get that on Apple, Spotify, get it on Overcast, you can get it on Stitcher. Uh, I'm really doing a really bad job of uploading the SoundCloud because it's annoying. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to the YouTube. And uh, do feel free to leave comments on them afterwards just for fun, you know, just, just purely for the bants. It's all good action, isn't it? It's all good stuff. I got a good one for you. Cops search for butt plug bandits accused of stealing hundreds of dollars worth of sex toys. Woo-hoo-hoo. Um, police in I need a sort of um, I need a sexy equivalent of the um, next episode bit to uh, when there's sort of things like this. I mean. Bevar Kelly. <laughs> uh, police in New Zealand are on the hunt for a couple of women who have been dubbed the butt plug bandits after being accused of stealing sex toys. According to News Hub, the two women went into a store named Peaches and Cream in Lower Hutt in New Zealand last week before leaving with a number of sex toys without paying. The women allegedly stole two anal climaxes worth more than 300 Australian dollars a piece. Uh, as well as a Hustler brand vibrator worth up to 250 notes and a leopard print dress costing 95 notes. They also attempted to take a wand vibrator costing 220 notes. Uh, as the women were leaving the store, staff noticed that their bags appeared to have, mu- have been much larger than when they entered. Uh, so they approached uh, the <laughs> Of course, being the opposite of uh, your bags are actually more empty well, since after you've entered. Anyway, look, sorry. Uh, so they approached the women and gave them a chance to hand over the sex toys. Staff members who spoke to News Hub said that one of the women looked pretty scared and opened up the bag, apologising and returning one of the sex toys. But the other woman refused to show staff the contents of her bag and instead walked off. The unnamed staff member said, Ah, we are give her multiple, ch- multiple chances and that's return the item. But she said, no. Okay. A team at the store decided to post CCTV footage of the women on the Peaches and Cream Facebook page as a warning to other local shoppers. Uh, since this was posted, other members of the local community have identified the women and claimed that they have targeted other stores in the area. Butt plug bandits, they will stop at nothing to get their hands on all the highest and most sophisticated butt plugs on the market. And they ain't paying penny one for them. Hell no. They're just going to be out there just climaxing anally all all day long without ever having to part with uh, a, a horse bean and you know god bless them uh, best of luck to them uh, <laughs> um, we'd rather give our attention to genuine customers it takes away from the customer experience when they have to be on guard the staff member added uh, that's not what we w- what we want to work in our stores. We want to work with customers. A police report has been filed and the cops have told the news outlet that they had carried out an initial forensic analysis. <laughs> the mind boggles. Uh, this isn't the first time that sex shops have been targeted by thieves, according to Peaches and Cream CEO. Uh, they told News Hub, They steal lube. They steal vibrators. They steal masturbators. They steal lingerie. They steal DVDs. I think most it would be personal... Personal use, but some stealing products, as some of them steal products to resell. These wankers are getting themselves off on stolen goods. It's an absolute disgrace. I really need to push, push the narrative of ethical masturbation. And you should not be getting off with stolen goods. It's an absolutely, it's an absolute disgrace. I won't stand for it. I think it's appalling. I, if I catch them, I will personally go down on them, come down on them very hard. Yeah, you know, I like a ton of bricks. Like I really, oh, 
Yes, I will really do them. I will beat beat them off fair beat them very hard. It will be disgraceful, disgusting. You will not want to watch it. It would be almost as all over the shop as my fucking accent. I've n- I really no idea what is going on with it. Is it South African? Is it New Zealand? Is there some sort of strange Southeast Asian tinge to it? I ab- absolutely no idea. I really, it's pro- it's problematic. Uh, if caught, the thieves are usually hauled up in front of a judge in order to reimburse the items stolen. The CEO added, we don't normally want them back. <laughs> I can see why. Oh, Claire Reed of the Lab Bible, putting in work and just getting it done. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm very impressed. What else we got? Oh, yeah, this is a bit of a hoop. Millennials uh, have killed the protest song due to their constant whining. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's true. It is true. All right, where are we? Millennials have killed the protest song because they moan too much about their personal problems. Instead of, instead of trying to fight global injustices, a Birmingham rapper has claimed today. <sighs> Again, it's just like anyone can claim anything and the Metro or Lab Bible will write a story about it. Uh, protest songs have a long tradition in popular music, but there has yet to be a Billy Bragg, Woody Guthrie, or Bob Dylan to emerge from the millennial generation, he said. Uh, I think pl- plenty of people would dispute that, but okay. Uh, Hip hop producer and rapper, I don't know how you pronounce that. Like, it's got an eight in it. Tapes, are we pronouncing it? Tapes, maybe? Tapes. Also known as Jimmy Davis. All right. Jimmy called out millennials for complaining about their own lot instead of those less fortunate. Yeah, nice one, Jimmy. He said, All you hear about these days is work sucks, life is so hard, I can't afford anything, especially online. Uh, All right. Uh, Maybe the millennials of this country could trade places with the children who were sent down into cobalt mines in the Congo to dig for the materials needed to make that smartphone they chained to. Wow, Jimmy Davis, the voice of reason. It's sickening. Uh, But what do we expect when we elect leaders who act out those exact same traits and we build in violent systems that worship celebrity culture and materialism? Communist detected. (laughs) He added, music should be at its most effective when times are at their hardest, when there's something to push against. The bleak years of the winter of discontent gave us punk, ska, reggae. Artists sang about the riots and the unemployed of the 1980s. Where are the artists calling out the Brexit shambles? Can you imagine anything worse than raps about Brexit? Like, <laughs> I mean, just having to listen to news about Brexit is bad enough, but, like, I don't know, fucking Stormzy doing a rap about Brexit or something, just... <sighs> Uh, where are the artists calling out the Brexit shambles, the homelessness crisis, or the ever-increasing gap between the rich and the poor? Um, where is the Dylan, Marley, Marley, Guthrie, or Marvin Gaye of this generation? The impactful rant has been replaced by the glorified whinge. Davis, 37, is hoping his new release... Oh, of course he's selling something off the back of it, isn't he? Hope and Pray... What's this, the song equivalent of Thoughts and Prayers after an act of terrorism? Which takes aim at the rich and the powerful in, in society can spark the revival of the protest song. Communist detective. <laughs> he said, hope and praise is a rallying cry and a wake-up call to the people of the world that we can no longer stand by and watch as our planet is torn apart and our society wrecked by power-hungry, money-obsessed governments and corporations. Communist. Yeah. But also that we have a responsibility to ourselves to start facing the truth of what living in this kind of system is doing to us internally. It's killing our inner spirit on a number of levels. Name three. Name three of these levels. Um, Jimmy Davis. There he is. Jimmy Davis. There's his face. Really. I won't zoom any, any closer than that. No? Shame. Damn shame. Well, Jimmy Davis, I agree in part, you know, and, you know, I wish the, you the best of luck with your new uh, single, Hope and Pray. I don't know whether or not hope or prayers uh, will be able to solve what is obviously clearly very, very complex 
socioeconomic and political issues. I uh, and I don't worry. I uh, you know I'm not saying that the uh, act of song does not play a part in you, you know uh, re- a revolution of sorts. You know I'm not saying that. I would never I would never try and uh, minimize the effect of a protest song. But I'm saying that perhaps just simple hopes and prayers may not be enough to solve the complexities of late stage capitalism. It's you know I'm uh, call me uh, uh, call me a nihilist if you want. I don't think so. I think I'm more of a, a rationalist, a, a, a reason, the reasonable centrist, you know, something like that. I'm a realist. And I just think that uh, presumably you're going to be charging money for this record, aren't you? And you're going to want people to pay for it? No? Sure. You're going to want to get Spotify streams, aren't you? Yep. YouTube streams? Yep. Advertising? Monetize that? Yep. Sure. Okay. I presume you're not going to... Are you going to give, give any of the money to charity? Uh, I'm not seeing any um, uh, any links here for charities. Um, I agree with you on the whole millennium whinging, millennials whinging thing. I think it's a pain in the ass. I think you know a lot of people need to realise that uh, you you know they're like the sort of uh, the the iPhone communists. You know, I I understand, but uh, we think we need more than hope, hope and press. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sure. Uh, anyway, look, is there I tell Just need more. Just need more dreaming, man. I turned into Liam Gallagher. Smoke your mind, yeah. Just we need more dreaming, more praying, more hope, more uh, smoking of your mind, man. Expand your dreams. Expand your mind. Say no to the system. All right, okay. I'm saying no to the system. Then what? Say no, man. Just take yourself out. What, what are you saying? I should go and live some sort of libertarian survivalist lifestyle? Just smoke your mind. Liam, you need to be more specific. <laughs> what are you actually saying? Smoke your mind. is dastardly in the chat saying nearly show 100 any ideas some but very little time to work on stuff time needed to earn living not enough hours in day Yes, I think we can agree that all the records on show 100 will be of all the shoe throws of the week so far. That's a given.
Oh, zero T, one more time. Sorry, zero T and distant future. Nice bit, that. This is some vibes in there. There is a number of vibes. There are vibes on multiple levels. It's the end of the show. Show number 98. Tomorrow will be 99. Thursday, number 100. Yep, any suggestions, please do let me know. I was trying to think of some sort of special guests. It's um, surprisingly difficult to organise people to come on the show. Most DJs do not like getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, what can you do? And uh, I'm, I'm try, I'm, hopefully we'll have some hours today and tomorrow to be able to film some fun content. I'll do my best. Look, I, I, I promise nothing. I want to under-promise, over-deliver. I'll see what I can do. Until then, it leaves me time to shout out the VIP list list of wonderful humans that are helping to keep this crazy dream alive and are helping support threshold.fm support coffee and memes support the station as a whole if you want your name on this list read out at the end of every coffee and memes show go over to our patreon page you can find it at support the station if you go to threshold.fm or there is a youtube li- a link in the youtube description and if you support for ten dollars a month or more you get your name on this list it's oliver hooper no oh, i'll stick it up there it is it's oliver hooper nicholas gonclaus tom ryan reese mosson squidgy beats parsons paulie hutton kieran r michael kaczynski matthew Tompkins, dave long joel potter cole murphy sam howard tony j richard patterson jack murphy tom cam stephen harris matthew bullard zara pickle jerome van thunderbutt mike pye anthony walker lily unsub richard franks thomas hall chode rider andrew harshelbeck john finnison bdr crew peter blatchford austin grief cooper Kennedy lightfield ryan glazer james parry dave thompson hendo bartendo lady squiffington liam the menace underwood dan fucking morris a guy with no stds justin mercer amy MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphreys, Shibby T, and Coco Shiva. Thank you so much for your patronage. You are all wonderful humans. Uh, some news should hopefully get the new version of the Android app up to date, but also some vague news in terms of uh, some developments in my quest to find some people to make version 2.0 of the iPhone and Android app, which will include an archive, uh, which is really kind of, I think the thing to take the station to the next level is having an archive within the app. So we will basically a page in it that will look not dissimilar to say the Apple podcasts or Overcast or any other podcast app really, where it will have nice artwork of all the shows and you'll be able to go onto each one and see all the old episodes of all the shows so really it will at that point kind of become a platform as well for great shows and great content and that's i think that's the thing to really take it up a notch hopefully we'll also be able to integrate discord into it however that might cost a f- bit more and at this point you know times are tight and we you know i want to do the best with what is currently available in the budget. Um, But I've had a much more reasonable offer than uh, a much more workable offer, basically. So hopefully by the end of the week, we may have maybe to get started. I don't know how long it will take, maybe a month or it's always just worth doubling it isn't it with things like this of how long stuff's going to take you you think this is pretty simple this is the uh it's a kind of two, three page app. It's not too much to go into it. Uh, I think you put someone on there full time, take a couple of weeks. And then two months later, like, yeah, we're going to need some more money on that. Going to need another couple of thousand pounds. Um, uh, I'll work it out. You know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to facilitate the, uh, I'm here as a conduit uh, for enjoyment to come from the ether into your face. Right. I will see you all tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Get your suggestions in for the show 100 on either the Discord or the Facebook group. Uh, Join the Discord if you have not already. It's a sort of rolling chat room, effectively. And so everyone is chatting away um, when the show is not live. And there's a link on the YouTube uh, video. And I'll try and put a link in the podcast description, see whether or not that works. Uh, But yeah, or join the Facebook group. Again, links in the YouTube description. I love you all. And I'm eternally grateful for your viewership. And uh, you're a lovely bunch. And I will see you tomorrow at 10. Goodbye.